Friday, 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 Friday. It's time for hot news. Hope you guys are ready for some spicy, toasty, warm little creatures of nice news. But before we dive into it, today's video sponsor is Honey. What is Honey, some of you may ask? Well, it's a free online shopping tool that automatically searches the interwebs for the best promo deals on whatever you're buying, whether it's at Best Buy, Walmart, eBay, Newegg, GameStop, Razor Store, anywhere, 30,000 stores on the interwebs. They will save you money by scanning it. Like for example, I've recently been having tons of issues with every single one of my appliances in my house breaking, like my refrigerator, my white microwave, they've all died. And so just head on over to Best Buy, pick out a decent uh, microwave that you know has a good warranty and hopefully won't die anytime soon like my stupid other appliances. And look, apply the Honey coupons and bam, I've already saved $5. Installing Honey is super easy, barely an inconvenience. You just go to joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. It only takes two clicks to install and then you're off to the races saving cash wherever you need to. They have over 10 million members who save an average of $28.61 per month, which is roughly 30 bucks, and they have over 100,000 five-star reviews. There is literally no reason not to add Honey to your browser today. It's free to use and installs in just two clicks. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. Again, that's joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. They support this channel. It would be appreciated if you guys supported us by downloading it, please do that. Much love. It'll save you money. It's free. No reason not to do it. And with that being said, let's jump on into the hot news for today. Speaking of saving money, for our first story at least, at least not saving money, I guess ads, you don't want ads. Brave, which is a web browser that has cryptocurrency baked into it and removes ads for you, actually does support your favorite creators with what they call basic attention token. You watch creators, the creators get your BAT, and then it's this like harmonious cycle. We're one of, we're very verified creator on their page and like since I signed up back in February we've made like $80 in basic attention token I haven't cashed it out but we like we have enough anyways they just announced that a version of the brave browser will now support chrome extensions this is because the new version of brave core is built on top of the open source chromium version of chrome and so they're now going to support chrome extensions and give you more reasons to transition over there in case you want to do that and in case you want to support us while using ad block and also ad blocking other things Things, this would probably be one of the least egregious ways to do it. You could also sign up for our Patreon where we give you ad forgiveness. That, that could work too. All right, we started off hot news talking about how you can save money. Now let's talk about how you can spend money, spend more money than you probably should and feel bad about it at the same time because it looks like Apple is launching their new phones which are gonna be called the XS, which is that 10S, is that 10s, is that XS? How do you pronounce it, like what? I'm like, and then it's gonna be the XS and then the XS Max, which, why? But then there's reports that while we thought that the highest end iPhone, the XS Max, would would be the highest end tier at $1,000, it's now, there are rumors circulating that it's going to start at $1,000 for the baseline XS and then go up higher based on the screen size that you actually want, which is totally bogus in my opinion, not really that happy. The XS Max is supposed to be the biggest iPhone yet coming in at roughly six 0.1 inches, which is quite large. And then we also have leaks on the announcement that should be coming this coming Wednesday. Not only is Apple going to be launching the iPhone XS, they're gonna be watching, launching, watching a new Apple Watch, which has an edge-to-edge -edge OLED screen, which is a more screen-to-body ratio than you had previously. Other than that, it doesn't look to be a huge improvement. So, cool. Apple, take my money. I'm not buying it if it starts at $1,000. I was considering it because I really like the iPhone 10. And then there was the news and the last hot news that I was upset about Henry Cavill being uh, Geralt. Well, it turns out the Witcher Netflix series should come out sometime next year. So I won't have to wait too long for my disappointment to be amped up to the highest levels or be pleasantly surprised and actually super enjoy it. And then in case you care at all about the Pixel 3, it appears that Google has finally announced the date at which they will announce it, which is October 9th, sending out an official invite. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I tend to think what MKBHD would be hilarious if they did it where they walk on stage, they say, today we have a surprise. All of the leaks from the past six months have been wrong, fake news, staged everything. Even the one left in the back of the taxi seat is not all, not at all accurate. And they're introducing the bezel-less Pixel 3. JK, all the leaks were right. Drops the mic, walks off stage. 
Then we also have reports that Samsung is ready with a 32 gigabyte DDR4 UDIM stick, which means that unlike high-end desktop stuffs where you have eight slots, you can get up to 256 gigabytes of memory, unlike a Threadripper or an Intel i9 or Extreme Series CPU setup. That is fantastic, 256 gigabytes. I've never had more than 64, so I'm just like salivating, chomping at the bit, trying to get this in a system. I would love that. These Samsung send us review symbols. Then previously, there were reports that AMD was going to re be releasing an X499 chipset. Then there were further reports that they actually canceled that because they realized Intel was further behind than they thought. Well, now there's more rumors coming up that AMD will indeed be launching X499, likely at CES 2019, to give updated VRM designs and better cope with the new Threadripper uh, CPUs that they released. Whether or not this is needed, uh, like I feel like companies have done a good job of updating their X399 chipset boards, like the MSI Meg Creation. Like as gross as some people might think that board is, it has an absolutely beefy, insane setup for the VRMs and the power stages. So like it can actually handle the 32 core Threadripper, but it might be good to have like just a general chipset that overall improves the performance design. Not sure it's necessary, but they might see what Intel has coming up. And so they need to keep mind share there. So they're just gonna release a new product to hopefully get people talking about them as well which and then again in further AMD news it appears that they're betting even harder on PCI Express 4.0 we've already had reports about how they're baking into driver support for their Vega 20 GPUs now there's information coming out that they are going to be implementing XGMI which stands for interchip global memory interconnect which is basically going to be infinity fabric across multiple GPUs through the PCI Express lanes and it can be well done on PCI Express or rather in PCI Express 3, since you'll have double the bandwidth. This is supposed to compete with NVIDIA's NVLink connectors, which will connect the RTX 20 series cards over a physical bridge. But instead, just like with Crossfire in its current implementation, AMD is going to opt to using it through the PCI Express bus itself, which means you can get connection speeds up to 64 gigabytes per second, as opposed to the current 32 gigabytes per second. Although that pales in comparison to the potential capability of NVLink at 300 gigabytes per second, whether or not this actually makes it into consumer cards and that we actually get better multi-GPU support in video games because there's the more uh, capable throughput of the NVLink connectors and XGMI on AMD side remains to be seen. Hopefully the incentivization of AMD and in NVIDIA continuing to support it might mean something for the future, but I'm not holding my breath on this one, even though it would be great to actually get better scaling across multiple GPUs. This is a feature I want. I think this is a feature we all want. Please work on it, game developers, and also people buy more video cards so that you could have two together. When NVIDIA first announced the RTX line of cards, which it started off with their Quadras, they also announced that Samsung would be producing the GDDR6 chips for those Quadra cards. Well, it appears that Micron will have the exclusive rights to the current setup of RTX 20 series cards, not the Quadros, but the like actual gaming version. So Micron on the video game side, and then we got Samsung on the actual important side with Quadros and actual professional level development. Whether or not that says anything about Micron or Samsung or it's just about bids, we don't know. But yeah, expect Micron in your current RTX cards if you did indeed buy one. But then let's go ahead and talk about the potential of getting a GTX 2060. RTX 2060, I say GTX 2060 because of the rumor that Adore TV brought out about when he broke the news that the current lineup of cards would be called the RTX 20 series, except for he said that the 2070 and above would have the ray tracing cores, therefore they would be called RTX, whereas 2060 and below would not have the ray tracing cores, so those would be still the traditional GeForce GTX. So GTX 2060, potentially, because Hardware Info has announced support for putting in the the NVIDIA TU-106 chip, which would be the 60 level of the card. So that's a possibility, but let's also harken back to when Hardware Info added some bad codes for, I think it was GV-102 and GV-104, which turned out to be completely inaccurate because it ended up being TU-104-102. So they were wrong then. It's also possible that they're wrong now and them adding support 
for a code name of the GPU die doesn't actually mean that it's being released anytime soon, nor do they have any information that we otherwise would it. But then let's talk about how well Nvidia has been doing in general, regardless of the RTX series. There's a new survey out from John Petty Research showing that in Q2, Nvidia has improved its market share in the market as AMD has slipped. So in Q1, AMD had 35% of the market, whereas Nvidia had 65, and now it's slipped so that AMD has 30% of the market and Nvidia has 69. So it appears that as cryptocurrency has waned, purchases for AMD cards have also gone down and people have been buying Nvidia cards for gaming. And so that's uh, mostly where you can account for the additional market share from Nvidia, because if you look at the same time last year, the numbers are basically identical with Nvidia having 69.7 and AMD having 30.3. It doesn't look like that's actually changed. It looks like there was a boon for AMD because of mining. And now that that's gone, Nvidia is back where they were before. So Nvidia has mine share, market share, all of it. Now let's go ahead and talk more about uh, their quoted performance, basically, about what they're saying the 20 series actually does have, because we reported in a previous hot news in an article with their head of technical marketing, he mentioned that Turing should be 35 to 45% faster in games where ray tracing doesn't happen. But then it turns out uh, in an interview with their executive vice president and chief financial officer, when asked the same question, how does Turing perform without ray tracing, then uh, he went on to say that it's actually two times the performance, not 35 to 45%, and saying that this is one of the biggest generational jumps that they've ever had. So basically Turing is twice as fast as Pascal, whereas previous reports is that it's 25 to 45%. Basically a whole lot of not clear marketing speak coming out of like their actual marketing department. He could be referring to deep learning super sampling, which is the chart that Nvidia also released, which we talked about in a different video right up there. However, he didn't specify that. He just said in traditional gaming scenarios, please wait for reviews another 10 days or so, and then we'll get further information about how these cards actually perform. In an interview that DICE gave talking about Battlefield 5 and their implementation of ray tracing, they actually said that they had to scale down how much ray tracing they were putting in because the performance levels and the performance hits that you get from putting ray tracing in doesn't merit the performance hit that you're taking because this is an FPS game. So the, the beauty comes at the sacrifice of the actual gameplay. And so they've toned down how, it, how it's working in something like the reflectivity of walls in a room. Ray tracing does impact performance performance quite heavily, getting below 60 FPS at 1080p with the 2080 Ti when ray tracing is fully enabled was not out of the question. Maybe trying to lean on deep learning super sampling as the feature we should be touting, not ray tracing because ray tracing takes way too much of performance hit to actually run even on cards with dedicated ray tracing cores. So let's hype up those tensor cores, everybody. Okay, everybody clap for tensor cores. Yay, tensor cores. And then speaking of the Battlefield 5 game, we have performance reports from the open beta showing versus the AMD Nvidia side of things, how they're performing. It turns out that at 1080p, Nvidia cards absolutely wreck the field with the 1070 beating the Vega 64, the R9 Fury, and then the 1066 gig beating the RX 580 8 gig, and then the, like it just decimating the entire field. This is coming from Guru, Guru 3D's benchmarks. When you go to higher resolutions at 1440p, the Vega 64 finally pulls ahead of the 1070, but then when you look at 4K, the Vega 56 pulls ahead of the GTX 1080, and the Vega 64 is slightly below the GTX 1080 Ti and nowhere in the ballpark of the GTX 1080. So as we've seen before, in games, as you scale up the resolution and demand more of the memory bandwidth, you get better performance from these RT or from these RX Vega cards. The RX 580 is slightly better than the 1060 at 4K, and at 1440p, it is also the case where the RX 580 does fantastically well, uh, beating it out by five FPS. So NVIDIA, AMD, staying competitive. And that's gonna wrap it up for all the hot news we have today. What do you think about the stupid iPhone name? What do you think about NVIDIA's kind of wishy-washy statements on the performance of the cards? What do you think about DICE saying that they toned down ray tracing because it impacted performance too much? Let us know anything and everything down in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit the like button. If you did indeed enjoy this video, please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our hot news and tech-related content. And don't forget that today's video is brought to you by joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. So 
if you want to save money like other people on the internet, thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them, join honey.com forward slash UFD tech to begin saving your money in just two clicks. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for me. I'm going to be done for the weekend. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Your smiling faces make this a real pleasure to do. And I love you too.